oh, the 1.23 update from a few weeks back added in the biggest round of weapon balancing that we've seen in a while. And while it definitely changed a lot of things in general, the assault rifle category definitely saw some pretty significant changes when it comes to what weapons are usable and what attachments you want to look to when creating a loadout. So today we're breaking down an updated list where we rank all the assault rifles currently in the game and show off the best attachments and loadouts for each of them. So if you enjoy the video at any point, or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here, we are always covering the latest Call of Duty news, intel, updates, setups, pretty much everything going on regarding COD, you'll find it right here. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. Also, Activision did just announce that these Season 4 Twitch drops have actually been extended until Tuesday. So if you do want to check me out over on Twitch, that link is down below and you can earn some free in-game items, including a brand new Growl Blueprint for tuning in there. Anyways, getting into the list, starting off with the worst of the bunch, at number 11, I gotta have the Scar. And uh, this is kind of an unfortunate placement, because the Scar could be so much better if the attachments for it weren't just so lackluster and, I guess, underwhelming. All things considered, the Scar is actually really good. You know, its damage and its range are both incredible. This thing is one of the strongest weapons we've got in the game. However, it's got a very small magazine and the recoil is not super ideal. And honestly, you aren't really able to fix those drawbacks in any major ways. Even when you do attack those weak spots, the Scar is still very limited by its available attachments. And so to me, it stands as the worst assault rifle in the game as of now. But that said, it is still usable, especially in like solos or duos where larger magazines aren't always necessary and where the engagements are a little more controlled, it's definitely still a viable option nonetheless. And here I think the go-to setup consists of the monolithic suppressor, of course this is going to be a rinse and repeat scenario for pretty much every weapon today. And then we've got the LB barrel for better range and control, the commando foregrip, but you could always try out the merc foregrip too if you want to try and limit that recoil even more. Then that is followed by the 30 round mags, which unfortunately is the biggest option we've got. If we had say 45 or even 50, I think the scar would be so much better, but for now 30 is what we're left with. And then finally, I do use the VOK 3x optic to help with the recoil stabilization some more and just all around visibility while aiming down sights. Now, if you are interested in a full on loadout outside of just the primary assault rifle, I do use the same stuff on all of my setups basically. So my secondary is pretty much always the MP5 with the monolithic integral suppressor, the Merc 4 grip, the 45 round mags, the stipple grip tape, and also sleight of hand. My perks are EOD overkill and amped, however I do switch to EOD ghost and amped whenever I do get my second loadout. And then I've got the C4 and the heartbeat sensor on there as always. And, like I said, that is the same for all of the following classes as well. Now, moving on into the number 10 spot, here I've got the FAMAS or the FR556. And, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Going into this video, I thought I was gonna have the FR556 a bit higher up on the list. But, after using it, after trying out multiple setups with it, it's just a lost cause in the vast majority of engagements. You know, being that this is a 3 round burst weapon with a less than ideal fire rate, it's just not consistently good in any given engagement. Uh, there will be times where you drop an enemy's armor in one burst. However, other times it'll feel like it takes three bursts to do that. And this weapon just is not super versatile. It's not super dominant. It is just a low tier rifle in my mind. And of course, this is all based on opinion at the end of the day. So by all means, feel free to drop your list down in the comments below. But on the FAMAS, I rock the monolithic suppressor, the sniper barrel to try and extend the range, the 60 round mags for those squad engagements, the stipple grip tape yet again, and also the VOK 3x optic once more as well. Then, getting into the 9 spot, here we've got the AK-47, which, much like the SCAR, is kind of a powerhouse, but its drawbacks definitely give it a reality check, I guess you could say. So, for starters, the AK-47 in pretty much any build is slow. It's heavy, unless you are using it as an SMG, which, honestly, I wouldn't recommend. It's just not a super mobile weapon. Then there's also the recoil, which can be pretty rough, especially at longer ranges. However, if you can get used to that and you can land your shots consistently, you will absolutely melt everyone because the AK does pack a punch. So on it, I'm using the monolithic suppressor, I know, never would have guessed that one, uh, the commando foregrip, the 75 round drums for squad fights and cleanups, the VOK 3x optic, and also the skeleton stock for better mobility. 
Now, coming in at number eight, I've got the Odin, which is another absolute powerhouse. This is actually the strongest assault rifle we have in the entire game, but unfortunately, it suffers from these same limitations that the SCAR does. You know, it doesn't have a larger magazine, and its recoil is through the roof. So you really gotta go out of your way to try and attack those areas and improve what you can. And once you do, that is when the Odin suddenly becomes a lot of fun to use. Now, unfortunately, you gotta make it pretty slow to get it controllable. So CQC fights can be kinda tough because of that, but if you are able to actually engage up close, the Odin will shred everyone and everything. This is sort of the, uh, the Thanos snap weapon, if you will, just because it melts. And to give it the ability to do so, I'm using the Colossus Suppressor, the, uh, the thickest suppressor in the entire game. Then I've got the 730mm barrel, as to not weigh it down too much with a larger one, the Merc foregrip for that recoil control, the 30 round mags, and also the VOK 3x optic yet again. Then at the number 7 spot, I've got the Ram 7, and uh, actually, I didn't plan that, I honestly just don't see the Ram competing with some of the other rifles we've got. Now, yes, the Ram's fire rate is phenomenal, that means it's awesome for close quarters engagements, but its recoil because of that fire rate, alongside the fact that it does not have a 60 round mag, sort of hinders it in those medium range fights, and it seriously hinders it in those long range fights. So the Ram is kind of stuck being an odd assault rifle in the sense that it is best up close and uh, not so good everywhere else in comparison. However, if you are a rush friendly player, you know, you like to be on the move and up in the enemy's faces, the Ram can be really efficient for that. And I would recommend using the monolithic suppressor, again, the Ranger Barrel, the Merc Foregrip, the 50 round mags, and the classic, the legendary, Stippy Grippy. Now, continuing on at number 6, I've got the CR-56 AMAX, the, uh, the newest rifle we have. And unfortunately, the 1.23 update did make it slightly worse. So if I had done a ranked list prior to the patch, this may have actually been a bit higher. But this is basically a much better version of the AK-47 when it comes down to it. Uh, the recoil is very similar, the damage is similar, and so the setup is pretty similar too. We've got the, uh, actually, you know what, Google, you take this one. The monolithic suppressor. The Zodiac barrel, the Merc foregrip, the 45 round mags, and also the VOK 3x optic once more, which all together give the AMAX much better range and control, which is exactly what it needs to be dominant. Now, breaking into the top 5, at number 5, I've got the M13, the, uh, the laser beam itself, when you want to talk about a no recoil weapon, the M13 is that weapon. This thing can shred at some seriously long ranges just because it is so easy to control and the range is so good as is. So all around, it is easy mode with the M13, especially with the attachments I run. I've got the monolithic suppressor, the marksman barrel, the commando foregrip, the 60 round mags, and of course, the VOK 3x optic. And despite the mobility taking a decent hit with this setup, it doesn't really feel all that slow, and like I said, it's got literally no recoil whatsoever, so it is incredibly easy to use. Now, at number 4, I've got the Kilo 141, and to be honest, number 4, 3, 2, and 1 on this list are all incredibly close to one another, and picking out which one was in what spot was definitely no easy task. You know, these upcoming weapons are all incredibly good, but yeah, I did put the Kilo at number 4, just because it feels slightly less dominant than the other remaining spots but it is still seriously effective in every single type of engagement. It's got great damage and range and also great recoil control as well, meaning the Kilo is a solid choice no matter the fight. So here I've got everybody's favorite suppressor, the Prowler Barrel, the Commando Foregrip, the 60 round mags, and the VOK 3x optic. So nothing too crazy, nothing too out of the ordinary, but uh, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Then at number three, I've got the M4A1. And again, this is such a tight race when it comes to what rifle is truly the best. And of course, you can't go wrong with the M4 at all. You know, it didn't get nerfed in the 1.23 update, so it is still just as dominant as it was in the months prior. And that dominance shows in every single gunfight you get into. So on the M4, I'm running the Monolithic Suppressor, the Grenadier Barrel, the Commando Foregrip, the 60 round mags, and also the stippled grip tape, as personally the XRK style iron sight works fine for me in most engagements, so I don't see a need for an optic there. Now, at the number 2 spot, I honestly think this is where the Growl 556 belongs. The nerf with the 1.23 update sort of dethroned it from being the best rifle in my mind, 
But that said, the nerf wasn't all that significant, so it is still super easy to use because of the low recoil, the high damage, and also the great mobility. So even though it was nerfed, the Grau is still a beast regardless. Now here I've got the Monolithic Suppressor, the Archangel Barrel, the Commando Foregrip, the 60 round mags, and once again the VOK 3x Optic. So pretty much the same setup we've been using on the Grau for a while. Then finally, at the number one spot, currently I believe the best assault rifle is in fact the FAL, just because this thing is now incredibly versatile. Thanks to the damage buff it got with the 1.23 update, it is now ridiculously good in close range fights, and its damage everywhere else is also very solid too. So you're gonna shred through armor and health alike, and if you've got the trigger finger to spam it, you are, uh, you're basically golden. Now, my go-to setup on it consists of the suppressor that of course is monolithic, the marksman barrel, the merc foregrip, the 30 round mags, and for one final time today, the VOK 3x optic. Which, as I said, this makes the FAL incredibly good at every single range. So, with all of that being said, that is effectively how I would rank all the assault rifles here in Warzone after the latest weapon balancing pass, and that is going to wrap things up for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, or if you just found it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here, and you want to stay up to date with the latest Call of Duty news, intel, updates, leaks, and everything in between, Feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on, that way you'll always know whenever I upload a new video. As always, if you do want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL on all SCUF, G Fuel, Control Freak, and Respawn products. All of those links can be found in the description below, and once again, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, take care.